is uh, Billy Humphrey, and I'm with City Refuge Baltimore, and I'm the CEO and founder here. The City of Refuge uh, exists to bring light, hope, and transformation to individuals, families, and communities. Uh, we are located in the Brooklyn community, but we serve predominantly South Baltimore residents. Um, we do work a little cross-jurisdictional, so Northern Anne Arundel County, Southern Baltimore County, but mostly it's South Baltimore City residents that we serve. We do that through five impact areas. We have uh, what we refer to as health and wellness, where we primarily are addressing food insecurity and some mental health um, services. We also provide supportive housing. That's our second impact uh, area. Everything from a home buyer's club to actual 10 beds under roof, 11 beds, excuse me. And, um, and then we also do casework uh, and community organizing. Um, our third impact area is youth empowerment. Um, we have after school programming, summer school programming. Uh, we do some things around youth and works or youth and jobs. Uh, we have our own internal youth programming and uh, do some mentoring and coaching with uh, kids uh, predominantly again in South Baltimore. And then our uh, fifth impact, uh, fourth impact area is workforce development. So um, our goal here is that we want to uh, help people get jobs. So facilitate training opportunities. We uh, currently have four uh, in January. By the end of January, we'll have eight eight or nine and um and we hope to in the next year or two to have as many as 25 uh, different jobs programs happening out of our workforce development hub. um and then fifth impact area is uh is around human trafficking in particular working with women who've been sex trafficked or sexually exploited so that's the work we do there's a number of programs under each of those impact areas our organization wants to bring hope to life uh, for other for people uh, in crisis and people in poverty. That's it. I, I think that sums it up uh, more than anything. I, I enjoy what I do because I get to work with some of the most amazing people who either have grown up or are growing up in the same neighborhoods um, I did. Um, and some of them are facing similar challenges and some of them are facing greater challenges um, that I grew up with. But um, a little bit of hope uh, can bring a whole lot of transformation in somebody's life because they have a belief, right? That, that, that there's a better tomorrow. Sometimes in nonprofit work, you're, you're encouraged to focus on one thing, keep the main thing, the main thing. And, um, we have kind of created an organizational shift. Um, I guess it's, I guess we started with an organizational shift in that we've decided to keep the people we serve the main thing. And so to be most successful, if you go back and look at some of the Brookings Institute's research around poverty and the cycles of poverty and how to address them, um, we think you cannot address the cycles of poverty without addressing in a holistic, integral way um, the social determinants of health, in particular the big four that I just mentioned. Um, you know, food insecurity is what got me started in this work. Um, and we decided we didn't want to just be a handout, but a hand up. Um, and so, you know, food insecurity, you can quickly fall into the trap that you're just a handout and really trying to take that work to the next level, um, that it's both a handout and a handout. But oftentimes you never earn the trust equity that is needed or the trust capital, I'll say, with an individual or a family um, until you can kind of meet that most basic need. So sometimes we say it like this, we're gonna meet you at your point of need. And where we meet you, we wanna build a relationship from there. And um, you know, we're not the heroes of anyone's story. We like to think of it more as a guide along life's journey. Um, we wanna guide you, you're the hero of your story. It's the choices that you make um, that, that on that journey to self-sufficiency that is going to help you um, overcome and achieve um, you know, what otherwise was probably disadvantage that you faced or inequity that you faced uh, or trauma you've experienced in your own life and journey. Interestingly enough, we, we were building out all of our um, program and outreach. Uh, and so much of that had to stop. We had to refocus and shift. We were always addressing food insecurity, but we had to, um, that kind of became the primary focus due to the pandemic. 
whether it was access to fresh produce or frozen proteins. Uh, we're in a food desert where we are here, um, which presents a lot of challenge, especially around healthy food options and choices. But with the limited transportation um, around COVID, um, you know, how is someone who lives in a food desert supposed to get access to food? So just lots of problems and everything from delivering food to uh, shut-ins or disabled individuals or families. Our volume changed. Prior to the pandemic, uh, example, we were serving 250 to 300 prepared meals primary to, uh, primarily to uh, people living unsheltered or um, without a home or people that were maybe on fixed incomes um, due to disability or of some nature or elderly and seniors. So 250, meal, 250 to 300 meals per week to um, at the peak of the pandemic, as much as three to 4,000 prepared meals per week. Currently today, a year, what a year and a half, almost two years into the pandemic, we continue to serve about 1,600 to 1,800 prepared meals Monday to Friday to those same families as well as others that are still being impacted. The depth of it is pretty intense, but we had to shift our organization. Plus in the beginning days of the pandemic, they were limited on number of people. Our organization has a quite a bit of volunteer intensive work, especially around food insecurity. Uh, but when you have a mandate from the health department that you can only have 10 people in the building, right? You have to kind of have to change the way you do things. So operationally it changed, demand changed, um, strategy and of course safety. How do you do that in a safe way to protect your staff and volunteers in a pandemic serving other people who are being impacted by that pandemic? Yeah, a lot, lot of challenges. Um, got to be flexible in, in this environment for sure. Greatest success in this work are the people we serve and uh, seeing them experience uh, hope and transformation in their own lives. Um, whether that's uh, I broke an addiction to a substance or I was homeless and now I have a home or I was a youth without an opportunity and now I have a job and a bright future ahead. Um, you know, the people, our greatest success are the people and their, and their stories regarding their individual transformation and success that has impacted their own household and family. Some people say, what's the challenge of the work you do? Um, I think the greatest challenge of the work we do are the people. Um, because sometimes you, you can want something for someone more than they want it. And it just doesn't work that way. There, there's not, there's not uh, that might be successful for me and City of Refuge, but that's not successful for the individual or family that we're serving, um, that we're trying to come alongside of because they've got to want it. I don't think they can be successful and find uh, hope and experience transformation in their own journey if they don't do it on their own. So the best part about what I do is the people and the worst part about what I do is the people. <laughs> and I say that with all the respect and love and I kind of say it with a giggle in my heart and in my mind, but that's both the greatest challenge and the greatest opportunity, the greatest success. And I don't want to say greatest failure. I think that's not the right word, but maybe the greatest frustration. I don't know that I worry so much about my legacy, but um, I guess if I wanted one or if I wanted it to be known, I, I would love for you know people to know that I, I'm, a, I'm a person who cares about other people. And I helped a few along the way. I want City of Refuge legacy to be uh, a, a loving, safe place where people who are in crisis or in the cycles of poverty can come to what would be known across Baltimore City as a one-stop shop for people in crisis and, and poverty. And they left on a journey to self-sufficiency and self-actualization. I think that's what I would want the legacy of City of Refuge. Probably me too, I guess. Um, that would be an amazing thing to be known for, is to be an organization and an institution that are helping people in the journey of life. In light of all of the inequity and the disadvantages, I think Baltimore needs a boost because now is the time. 
the awareness of the issues we're facing have been heightened due to the pandemic, due to the inequity, due to the injustice. And now is the time for Baltimore to experience a boost and um, let's come together. Um, corporate America, government, uh, nonprofit, NGO, um, individuals, families, communities, faith communities, um, let's come together and let's boost Baltimore. Um, now is the time. Oh,